Monsieur le Premier ministre, un grand merci pour avoir accepté l'invitation de la télévision publique d'accorder cette interview. J'ai remarqué que la cérémonie au cours de laquelle vous avez reçu le titre de docteur honoris causa à l'Université nationale d'études politiques et de l'administration publique, vous avez commencé la parole de réponse en français et puis vous avez continué en anglais. Pourquoi avez-vous fait cela J'aurais pu continuer en allemand et puis encore en tant que luxembourgeois, c'est mon pays, mon pays c'est l'ouverture, c'est le multilinguisme et c'est sa force. Et comme je voulais quand même qu'on me comprenne, je me suis limité en français et en anglais. Et comme mon roumain, à part Moulsmask et à Révédéré, je trouvais que c'était un peu bref ces deux mots pour faire tout un discours. À Bruxelles, au Parlement européen, on négocie dans le contexte du Brexit, semble-t-il aussi l'avenir de l'anglais dans l'Union européenne. Euh, Qu'est-ce que vous pouvez nous en dire Il s'agit bien sûr d'une blague en vogue à Bruxelles, plutôt du mot euh, typique britannique. Euh. Ah, L'humour britannique, ça me, nous manquera beaucoup, mais la langue britannique restera. Le fait que l'Irlande et Malte soient toujours membres, et je pense que c'est des langues euh, officielles de, des deux pays aussi, euh, à côté du Maltais, parce que je ne veux pas l'oublier, euh, on, on font que l'anglais restera. Et puis, vous savez... On a la langue, les langues officielles et on a la langue quand même du commerce, la langue du business. Donc il faut arrêter de dire maintenant qu'on va retirer l'anglais de partout. On reconnaît quand même, c'est une langue qui aujourd'hui est utilisée dans le monde entier, euh, dans le milieu des affaires, et donc la langue anglaise restera et a une importance qu'elle gardera. Tout ce qu'il y a, c'est que peut-être au niveau des, des institutions, euh, les, 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 et même pour vous dire, la plupart des fonctionnaires, même s'ils ont d'autres origines, se basent très souvent sur, la texte, sur les textes anglais. Donc l'anglais est une langue importante, mais j'insiste pour le français, pour le francophone, et c'est pour ça que je, je me suis adressé tout à l'heure aussi en français, que je vous réponds en français. Ça fait partie des langues euh, administratives du Grand-Duché de Luxembourg, à côté du luxembourgeois et de l'allemand, ah. qui est aussi langue officielle, le luxembourgeois. Je, veux, euh, je vous propose de continuer en anglais, peut-être que de cette façon le Brexit sera plus doux. Euh, ah, je crois que ce n'est pas la langue qui va changer, si vous voulez. Je peux continuer en luxembourgeois, comme ça, il ne sera pas du tout. Alors, si la langue fait le, fait le changement. Non, je pense que ce n'est pas une question de, de langue. Le Brexit, d'où pas d'où, vous savez, ce n'est pas moi qui le fixe. Hein. Le Brexit, c'est une négociation qui aura lieu entre le, 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 la Grande-Bretagne et, euh, et l'Union européenne. C'est euh, à, à, à base égale. Donc, si eux veulent un hard Brexit, ils auront une hard réponse. Ils veulent un, un Brexit... Euh, Intelligent, ils auront aussi une réponse intelligente. How do you see the future of the European Union in the context of Brexit? Good. I think even that uh, the future of the European Union can be stronger um, with the Brexit because remember, uh, on the day of the Brexit, they said, "You will see easy, we will leave," and and we see nothing is easy. This uh, easy leave procedure uh, took 10 months even to trigger Article 50. And we realized that, um, in fact, now, because of the Brexit, everything you're going to lose because of leaving the family. So um, I think that Europe can be stronger if we stay united. Uni unity among the 27 is the most important. Yes. What are the causes that lead to this rupture between Great Britain and the European Union? It was never an easy situation, uh, easy relation, I would say. Situation was okay, but relation, it was always, before they were in and they wanted a lot of opt-outs, now they're out, they want a lot of opt-in, so it's a bit a strange situation. But I think that the, the UK and, uh, and, uh, and Europe uh, still are neighbors. Maybe they're not any more family members, but they're still neighbors, and so we need to respect each other. And it's, it will be a lose-lose situation if we want to punish someone. So it's important to stick together and to work together and even to find some fields where we are still able to work together. For example, on, on defense and other topics, I'm sure that we'll find some uh, topics we fully agree. I have the impression they wanted to be inside in, and outside in the same time. That was always the, the situation. They were in with a lot of outs, now they're out with a lot of, they want with a lot of it. But that's not possible. That's yes. not possible. You know, remember, I want my money back. This is something uh, I don't need to remember, was a sentence from a, an, uh, an UK uh, prime minister. So it, it was always a tense situation. And um, the problem is if in the UK you say from Monday to Saturday that Europe is bad, it's difficult to get the confidence of people on Sunday if they are asked if they want to stay or not. So it's also how you, you deal with it and how you, you, you propose it. But the door is still not fully closed. So uh, 
if they discover now feelings, special feelings for Europe and they want to say we love you that much, we need you, we don't want to leave, we still can discuss. Have you the feeling uh, it will be the second marriage? Um, that happens. I was a mayor. You have some people then when they get divorced they realize what they lose and then they want to come back. But politically it will be difficult for UK politicians. I would, my door is open. My door is open, but it's, uh, the UK have to do the first step. It's not on our side. Luxembourg wishes to take over an European financial institution that is currently in London. Romania is interested to move the European Medicines Agency to Bucharest, which is also located in London now. How can we support each other to reach these objectives? I think we are not in, 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 in Souk in Marrakesh where we will do a deal, you give me this, I give you this. I think what is important, we fix um, a rule of procedure now, we will uh, soon fix criteria next week in Brussels and then after fixing these criteria the procedure will go on. For me it's, I can just defend the position of Luxembourg by having uh, 65 agreements that say that financial institutions should be in Luxembourg and that we are the European capital after London for the moment about financial activities and I just have to remember that if they leave London, then the second one, the second capital in Europe is Luxembourg, so it would be good to have that uh, in, in Luxembourg. But I don't want to interfere now in if we are still negotiating criteria. Luxembourg is one of the biggest investors in Russia. Due to the sanctions imposed on Russia, many investment funds in Luxembourg are at a loss or are having to retire. How can we convince them to come in Romania? I can't. Because I can't tell them to do something, so I can't tell them not to do something. It's a private, it's private investment. Yes, so, I know, but uh, you can explain us uh, how can I, I just I, can tell you one to thing. Convince them. I, I know. I won't convince them because I'm in a free market, so I'm not there to convince. It's political is one thing, and business is another thing. If you mix business and politics, it's never good. Fact is, if you want to invest money somewhere, you need also stability. And I'm. I'm here in, in Romania where we don't know how will be the future of the Prime Minister I met, how will be the future of the government I met. This is not good for investment. Investors want to have planification. They want to have uh, a security and they don't have that for the moment here. So it's not good for you, but I just tell you an advice, but it's uh, on Romania to decide what they want. But this is for businessmen, and it's not only for Luxembourgish business. Luxembourg is the second country in the world in which 30% of GDP is produced by financial and banking sector. How did Luxembourg manage to become the banker of Europe? Being open. Being open. We um, took down 150 years ago our fortress, and this was the moment when we, we opened. We were the first in the 30s to have, uh, you know, these radio channels, RTL, which is now a uh, a famous, uh, one of the most important European um, media group. We started with satellites, we started with banks, so always being open, being ready for next uh, big thing, being compliant. I'm very proud that my government now is fully compliant with all uh, international regulations, and this is, uh, I think, our secret, to have the capacities and um, the opportunities. What are the fields in which the companies of Luxembourg have special expertise? eventually to have uh, uh, investments in Romania? I came, I came here also to meet the uh, ITC um, sector because I think there could be a win-win situation. I met also your minister in charge of telecommunication, still minister because I still don't know how long. Uh, and uh, Romania is always surprising. <laughs> yes, but that's not good for business. Businessmen don't like surprises. They just like good surprises. But they don't like surprise where they don't know how it will go. So I, I, want to, I want to have more exchange on the ITC level and so that we will be able to have an exchange because you have good people in the ITC sector and, but we have to know it. And we have good investors who want to invest for sure in Romania but they need to know and they, have, they need this, this um, trust and this planification so I try to be matchmakers. Romania could be, in a way or another, uh, India of uh, Europe from IT sector. Yes, I uh, met today uh, uh, very good teams. I want to come closer together because I want to, to be able to have a really good exchange on those topics. To conclude this discussion on the topic of economic collaboration, there is a great potential on both sides, but the results are modest. Moreover, Romania has a negative balance of trade compared with Luxembourg. 
What are the areas that Luxembourg is interested in regarding economic cooperation with Romania? ICT, for example, is a good example. I think uh, ICT is a full potential. You told me just now that uh, ICT could be the India of, uh, of ICT. I think uh, Romania should be Romania of ICT, but with the e-Romania, the ICT Romania, the ITC Romania, the Romania 5.0. That's what I think is great to have in European countries. Like other countries, my country, Estonia, we are really pushing up this digital revolution and being good at it. And I'm sure that this is a huge potential between. And if you check now, I think it's 6% of your GDP is done by the ITC sector. And the government wants to go to 10%. Imagine, it started nowhere and where we are now. So it is an important sector. Europe is at a crossroads. Which of the scenarios of European Union reform proposed by President of European Commission will Luxembourg support? A mixture, a mixture of different scenarios. One, to, to be able to, to change what is not working or what could be better. Um, and what doesn't work? Oh, there are some things. I, I, for example, and this is the, 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 the next step in, 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 in what you are asking. In fact, we, we speak about enhanced cooperation. It, it seems that in Romania, enhanced cooperation, ooh, what is enhanced cooperation? I want, for example, in digital single market, work with my colleagues in Europe. And I don't want to be blocked by one country or another country. So it is important to work together. And so this is what I want to have, this Europe where we are able to have maybe some speeds, different speeds in Europe. I prefer two speeds than no speed at all. And so in the topic, for example, of digital single market, let's go around the table, having a coalition of the willings, and if you, some other countries want to join later, we should let them. The idea of the Marshall Plan for Central and Eastern Europe has been discussed recently. What does this mean? Marshall Plan for... It's, uh, it's just the fact that we, it is important to support the economies also of the countries. It's important to invest in people, to invest in the economy and that, um, that the balance between the countries also get less big because I don't want you. You said you want to be the India. I don't want that afterwards all the brains leave your country or another country if they come, if, if, we, if we have too big balances between the, the salaries in Europe. So it is important to, to help the economies of countries where we see that the salaries are low or the, the GDP is lower to help to get up. This is what we, we need to do. This is what I think structural funds are there. They are not there to build just roads. They are there to help the economy to grow so that the population of the country can take profit of an European common project of growth. If in Romania is doing well, it's good for me. If your economy does well, people will want to invest in your country. And if your country gets richer, it's good for the budget. <laughs> I'm very honest with you. So in, in, in contribution or payment, so it's, it's a win-win situation. You are the Prime Minister and the Minister of Culture. What are the cultural areas of interest that could determine Luxembourg to invest in Romania? Cultural cooperation? Yeah, we had a very good experience with CBU. Very, very good one. We were able to work when we, in 2007, were European Capitals of Culture. And we should continue to do that. We should continue to work on different projects and to see how we are able to exchange also. Because culture, we live nowadays in a society where people try to split us. And I think culture is the place where we can bring old, young, nationals, foreigners, rich, poor, big, small, fat, tall, <laughs> all the people together. This is culture, where you don't need to believe all in the same, but you want to share some things. And so we should uh, be able to promote culture uh, between the countries, but also in the countries, and uh, to learn each other. You are interested only uh, in Sibiu or uh, in other cities? No, I, your Prime Minister told me um, also uh, about uh, the next capital uh, of culture of Timisoara. Uh, but the fact is, uh, I'm not deciding as Minister of Culture which will be the counterpart. So I know that the organizers of culture here uh, for Esh, they had already some discussions with Sibiu and so they will have to discuss. I'm open to different projects if we can, but we have to see it step by step. I don't choose one country and say this is my only partner in culture, because this would be wrong. Culture is open. open. All right. A part of the historic German settlers in Romania were originally from Luxembourg. How do you think we can build cultural ties based on this common heritage? 
Zivabur, where they speak, even Luxembourg, as you have to know. And I'm uh, uh, very happy to, 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 to visit. Um, I say I don't want to specify now because of immigration of, of different stuff. I think if we do an exhibition or something like that, it's always good to remember the ties we had. But we have also to think about the future. We think our past, our culture is very important. But we so, I spoke before about the ITC. Um, we should support also future projects. We should be proud of our past, but also ready for, for, for the future. Because if the, if the future goes bad, we won't have money to preserve the culture and the heritage that we have. So um, it is, uh, I would love to have not only cultural, I would love to have also cultural, also economic, also ITC, also to have exchange like that where we can uh, help and more global. Mr. Prime Minister, one last question. Current day Romania is situated at the eastern border of the former Roman Empire. Today it is the eastern limit of the new Roman Empire, as the European Union has been called. How can the European Union consolidate this border to make it safer and more economically and socially stable? I think Romania is now, as a country is a full member of my family, European family called Romania. Romania had border. They are for the moment, for me, doing the job as they had to do it. And I want safe Schengen borders. I want that because I don't want to explain to people that I don't know what is happening inside my countries because I don't have safe borders. And we have to recognize that. We just, we, it's important that we keep it on the agenda and that we in Brussels are going to recognize all the efforts and the work done by your country. For me, the work done by Romania is huge yes. and we should be able to discuss that Frontex has a role, but not only Frontex. We have also European borders where everybody has his own responsibility. If it's from here to, uh, to Serbia, if it's uh, with uh, the different neighborhoods that, that exist, uh, uh, with, uh, with all the different parts, uh, going, going around, I think it's, uh, we should be able to discuss all the borders together and to be sure that European borders are safe. Because we know that other Schengen countries have borders where we could have a longer discussion about... Italy or like, Greece, for example. No, 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 I don't ask me to quote any yeah. country. I just said that some Schengen borders are not perfect. And we should be able to discuss about that and see how we could do it better. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you again, this time in English.